I'm here in Austria today to put to the test the GMX3 OEM dampener versus the Ramrod's tungsten dampened weight. I've got accelerometers mounted on the bow. And we're gonna gather data to see how much of a difference these different dampeners make. And if you have an Exceed riser, you'll be able to see if these Ramrod tungsten dampened weights make any difference. So like I said there in the intro, I'm in Austria and we're gathering a whole bunch of data on the GMX3 riser using accelerometers that are mounted to amplifiers, which goes through an oscilloscope and that gathers data on the computer and starts to generate actual vibration analysis data here on this riser. So we'll be able to put to the test the GMX3 riser and see how much of a difference the actual dampener makes, the one that comes with the bow. And because the Exceed riser doesn't come with one and this one cannot be modified to mount into the riser, um, maybe you could possibly do that. You'd probably have to cut this ridge off and then glue it in place. But I don't know if Hoyt even sells these as pieces and parts. But Ramrods did hook me up here with their tungsten dampened weights that are three ounces. It has powdered tungsten inside of the actual weight itself. And then you screw it into the pocket where you would normally mount the Exceed weights. And uh, instead of just a solid piece being there, you got some vibration dampening. Now that it is legal to be used in barebow, it really should cut down on some of the noise. Now I already did shoot this, full disclosure, and I recorded the data here behind me shooting at blank bale with a fixed crawl. I tuned the bow for a 20 meter crawl roughly, and I used the 20 meter crawl. I say roughly because the bow wasn't perfectly tuned, and so maybe the data is not entirely accurate for an, a perfectly tuned bow, but I think most people out there would tune the bow to a level similar as to what I did. The bear shafts flew fine and hit within the group at 20 meters. And uh, you know, the bow's not perfect, but it definitely is a good representation of what I've seen out there when people bring me equipment to tune with them. And so I believe that this will be a good representation as to how much vibration is actually killed with the different dampeners. If you're interested in these ramrod tungsten dampened weights that you put in the pockets of your Exceed or your GMX3, and I believe it also fits in the XD riser, the, the Formula XD that is, I'll have links in the description below. Those are affiliate links and it does help this channel out if you click those links before you shop. And I will also have links to the GMX3 and Axia limbs here from Hoyt through Lancaster Archery Supply. I haven't seen the data myself yet, but what Thomas could see while the actual test was going on was he could see the actual vibration, the raw data of the vibration changing, and then it has to be run through a program to be analyzed to actually check the actual maximum G-forces, how violent the actual vibration is, and then overall how long it actually continues to vibrate. But I did feel a big difference, and we all heard a difference here of the actual noise the bow is making when we put the OEM dampener in the pocket. Without the dampener, the bow seemed to be quite loud, quite harsh, somewhat like a typical bear bow, if I were to say, because they typically tend to be quite loud as it is. So very loud, very harsh and metallic sounding, and you could hear it humming for quite a considerable time afterwards, and I could feel a decent amount of vibration in the handle for a longer period of time. Very loud. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I can feel the riser too, just <laughs> humming in my hand. It's, yeah. With no dampener and nothing in the pockets, it's really, really loud for me, for sure. They definitely are very, there's a lot of resonance in this system without them. Once I put the dampener in the pocket itself, like I said, it did definitely quiet it down. It killed the vibration a lot quicker. I didn't feel the vibration in the handle so much and it, it overall felt much better. Definitely quieter. Maybe not as over, like the, the first initial sound is maybe still the same loudness, but it dies. It doesn't hum so much. And it's more dead in the handle, definitely. When, like I can feel a couple hits of the string hit, hitting and bouncing off the limbs, but then it dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I put the tungsten dampened weight from Ramrods in the pocket, I actually felt like the bow's vibration overall was very similar to the OEM dampener. It maybe stopped dampening a little quicker, meaning the, the what I mean by that is the actual amplitude, the maximum vibration hit directly after the arrow leaves the bow. It felt like 
that quieted much quicker with this tungsten dampened weight, but maybe the vibration sustained for a little bit longer than the actual OEM dampener. So it did definitely make a difference. I felt more of a difference, honestly, with the actual weight because they are three ounces a piece. So that's an extra added six ounces into the overall bow system, into the riser. And it did feel a considerable amount heavier as far as the mass weight's concerned. Sounds about the same. Maybe, yeah, the, the maybe a little quieter. Spectrum is different. So the if I had to guess, the overall amplitude dies faster. Like how much, how harsh it is, dies faster, but it remains a little longer with this. Uh, is what it feels like. It looks like, like this one. Uh, Let me shoot one more before you and tell me. Then the amplitude stays like flat, and the other one is dampened and it come up again. And then oh, really? I didn't, yeah. Yeah, but I could feel it. Maybe I don't know. That was one shot. Let not me try much. Again. I mean, it's very close. I would say maybe a little bit more dampening. Like the initial hit is lower, and it, but it remains longer than the OEM one. It's been quite some time, and as you can tell, I'm back home in Florida. Uh, lots of things were going on in Austria and I wasn't able to do follow-up footage after reviewing the data. And actually, I've compiled a little bit more data and made a spreadsheet that kind of breaks it down so I can show it to you a little bit more clearly. But before I do that, I want to explain to you the actual differences in the two different data sets that I'm gonna show you. First thing though, uh, really quickly, is to announce that the precision tiller bolts from Kaminsky Archery, these ones here, are now available in black. I have them available for pre-sale on my website, jakekaminski.com, so if you wanna check those out and grab a set, please do head to links in the description below or a card at the top up there. So on the actual vibration analysis data, there's two different types of data sets. There's a PSD, which is a logarithmic way to display actual vibration and frequencies. And you'll see a peak, which is the addition of both the positive and negative axis of the actual vibration sensor, the accelerometer, and then it compiles that data along a spectrum of frequencies that again is logarithmic. And so that peak is the peak hit, the maximum amount of force at that given frequency. Now the RMS data is a little bit different. It's non-logarithmic, it's linear in fashion. So from left to right across the actual frequency spectrum, it's showing you each individual spectrum or a specific range of actual hertz, the actual frequency of the vibration. And then the actual bar chart is showing you the total amount of energy within the given time period that we took data. So just before the shot broke to a certain time period after the shot. I believe it was 250 or 300 milliseconds after the initial shock of the arrow coming out of the bow. It adds up all of the vibration within that frequency and gives you a number or a bar on the bar graph rather. And it's basically the total amount of vibration within that frequency. So how much it's vibrating, how much energy, how much fluctuation of that particular frequency in the actual system of the bow. And so if you look at the bar charts, you can see that it changes depending on the actual frequency you're looking at. And in the upper left-hand corner of the actual chart, you'll see the mean acceleration in G's, the RMS data, the acceleration of the top and the bottom in different numbers. Now top and bottom slightly differently because Thomas put the sensors on the bow at the top pocket and at the bottom pocket. They were both pointing towards the target and so they're getting the acceleration data in line with the actual string as the string and the limbs are fluttering and the riser is harmonically vibrating. So with the combination of those two different data sets, you can really start to visually see the difference in the actual vibration data when you go down the list from no pocket dampeners at all, not the OEM one or the ramrods one, and then when you switch to the actual uh, OEM one and then versus the ramrods one, you can start to see a difference. Now I shot three shots of each setup because I wanted to get an average of those three shots to get a little bit more clean data because as you can see from shot one to shot two to shot three, those numbers do vary ever so slightly due to inconsistencies in release and just due to overall differences within the system. Maybe my crawl was slightly different from one shot to another 
or who knows what. It just changes from shot to shot. So then what I did is I took all of the data in this RMS chart in the upper left hand corner of all three setups with all three shots did an average amongst the two top and bottom and an average of all three and then I compared to get a difference of percentage between each one. So taking a look at the actual raw data, if we take an average of the top and the bottom of all three shots of the no dampeners, we're at 2.24 as far as the actual value of energy and it drops down for the OEM dampeners down to 2.11. And that's a total overall reduction of 5.5% in regards to the actual energy in the system or how much it reduces vibration. Now the ramrod tungsten weight itself drops the actual value to 2.0094, which is over a 10% reduction compared to no dampeners at all, which is about double what the OEM dampeners do from Hoyt. After talking with Thomas to try to get an idea as to what's going on here, he's suggesting that the actual rubber sling here that the weight sits inside of in the GMX-3, they're just not optimized for frequencies within archery to actually reduce vibration that you can feel. Stuff that you feel is generally lower in the frequency spectrum. This very lightweight aluminum weight inside of this relatively stiff rubber is gonna dampen much higher in the frequency spectrum, generally speaking. It'll sound better, it'll reduce some of the pinging, but as far as the actual vibration feedback that you feel, it's not gonna absorb a ton. Now, it's not an apples to apples comparison because the mass weight between the two is vastly different. This is three ounces from ramrods. It's a lot more mass weight, and if you can afford to add the three ounces top and bottom, or maybe one versus the other to change the balance of the bow, it might be better for you as far as vibration reduction quality is concerned. If you have a Hoyt Exceed and you don't have the OEM pocket dampeners, the 360 degree dampeners that Hoyt calls it, you can add these ramrod tungsten dampened weights and it will actually reduce more than these will, again, at the cost of adding more mass weight. So it might be something that you may not want to go for because it actually adds a considerable amount of weight. But if you're shooting bare bow and things like that, overall, it feels much better with a little bit more mass weight and still you can get a good amount of balance with a mediocre sized weight in the actual stabilizer bushing so the bow reacts happily. So it was actually quite fun to gather this data and to crunch the numbers to see what the actual differences are. And if you enjoyed it too, please comment below and let me know what you think because there's a lot of interesting data that I'm about to share and would like to continue to do so. And if it means something to you and you're interested in it and you think I should do more of this when comparing and contrasting different sets of equipment, please let me know and I'll continue to do so. Like I said originally, if you're interested in grabbing these ramrod powdered tungsten dampened weights for your pockets of the Hoyt risers, I will have links in the description below. They also have other good products in regards to stabilization and powdered tungsten dampened weights that you can put on your existing stabilizers if you shoot Olympic style recurve. I'm a data guy and numbers don't lie, especially when you're using certified and calibrated pieces of equipment. You get real data that actually tells you what's going on within the system. The human body can feel a lot, but when you have numbers to back it up, it really just validates what the actual archer is feeling. Hey, if you like this video, consider sharing it. Genuinely, that helps this channel grow. I don't operate any other social media and I rely on you to help spread the word about the channel. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please consider supporting this channel. There's many different links in the description below. There's affiliate links, Patreon links, and a link to my website, jkaminski.com, where you can grab a bunch of gear and products that I am currently offering. And you can also sign up for coaching. I can't thank my supporters enough. Without you, I wouldn't be able to produce this content, at least not to this level, so thanks.